How's it going everybody? It's Cam Dorian. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for clicking on this video. I appreciate you. In today's video, I'm going to be going through all of the mods I've done on my 2017 Kawasaki Vulcan 650S. Uh, I've done, I think, about 9 or 10 different mods. So I just want to make a video showing them all real quickly. Um, I get a lot of questions on what the mods are, where I got them from, and all that stuff. So this video will kind of show them all, um, and I'll put links in the description below for where you can purchase them. Uh, most of the mods are from Amazon. A couple of them are from other random websites. So if you also if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. And let's get into it. I've also done install videos on most of these mods that I did myself. Some of the mods came with the bike, so that's why I didn't do any install videos on it. I'll also leave links to those videos in the description below so you can check them out if you want to buy some of these mods and install them yourself, much like I did. Now, in my opinion, these are the best mods you can do for your Vulcan 650. Um, as I said, it's just my opinion. It's all based on my uh, liking in terms of aesthetics and also functionality. Um, so, the first mod, and this actually came with my bike, is this little guy on the front fender here. That is a deer whistle. Um, living in New Jersey, we do have a lot of deer that run in front of you. I actually accidentally hit a deer that ran in front of me in my car, so I'm always paranoid about that. So, that little thing is supposed to be a deer whistle, and it supposedly, um, whistles at a frequency that only deer can hear and probably other animals um, so when they hear it they run away so it's kind of like a safety feature um, added to the bike and then we have the radiator grill cover got the Vulcan S logo on there so this is for, bought from Amazon it's basically just a piece of metal um, that has holes in it uh, and it has two mounting uh, holes on each side um, it's pretty simple basic it was in my opinion uh, overpriced but it uh, protects that grill and um, gives it a nicer cleaner look also with that Vulcan S logo and then we got the LED headlight so this is from a company called uh, SKT Yance so Sky Yance or something like that um, it's a 7 inch LED headlight it's got the daytime running lights on the sides, there's two angel eyes. Um, it is a very bright, nice looking beam that you get out of it, much, much better than stock. So I highly recommend getting this or just some kind of upgrade because the stock headlight is very, very weak. Um, and also you can integrate the left and right turn signals with these blinkers. So they will uh, normally just stay white um, while you're riding. And then when you signal to use the blinkers, they will actually blink um, and turn orange depending on which side you're blinking. Um, so when I had them installed with my stock turn signals in the front there, um, the integration was fine. So they would blink at the same time. But now I upgraded to these different uh, turn signals and some, for some reason that integration doesn't work anymore. Um, it just kind of stays orange, whichever turn signal I'm blinking, um, and it doesn't blink. But Start to figure that out, but not a big deal. So it looks great, and I think it works great. Then we got the beautiful low profile turn signals. So these are the Bike Master Tanto LED turn signals that I have in the front. Very nice looking, sleek, low profile. The current stock ones are kind of bulky and they have that white plastic on the front, so I don't really like that look. Um, but these are LED as well, so they're brighter than stock. Um, and yeah, they are very nice, very easy to install, um, and they just kind of give that bike a cleaner, meaner look, and a little bit more aggressive, pretty much my, my liking in terms of aesthetics. Alright, now moving up the handlebars, we have these CX EPI adjustable brake and clutch levers right here. They have the Vulcan S logo on them as well. Um, and obviously they're blacked out. I was going for the full blacked out look on the bike. Um, they're very easy to install. They also have uh, levers here to adjust um, in terms of the distance here. Uh, I have it on the closest distance because I like that shorty feel. It's much easier to grab. Uh, it also reduces the fatigue you feel in your hand from longer rides. And here comes the sun. This is the clutch lever. 
pretty much the same thing. Um, very easily just connects to your existing housing for your uh, clutch. It's a very easy install. Especially great for quick shifting. It makes it very easy to just pull it, um, change gears really fast, especially when you're trying to accelerate. And we got the Fenrir bar and mirrors on the left and the right of the handlebars. So these are pretty high quality. They're very sturdy and durable. Uh, you get a very nice picture of the rear when you're riding. Um, they're also very easy to install. You can also install them above the bars. Um, I have them below just because I like that look of not having any obstruction um, when I'm riding in, in front of me. Um, and yeah, as I said, you know, when you're riding, you know, it's just a quick, quick look down and you see what's right behind you. Um, and they are much better than the stock rear view mirrors. I feel like the stock ones, you kind of just see most of your shoulder. Um, but with these, you kind of see more behind you. You do see a little bit of your hand um while you're riding on the on the little bit of your arm but it's definitely much less obstructive compared to your shoulders um and yeah overall i'm really happy with it you also have good clearance with the tank so it doesn't hit it when you're fully turned um and yeah they are made by fenrir also there's no vibrations so i did get some questions about the vibrations and if i felt any vibration while riding since i did get rid of the bar ends that came with the bike um and i guess the weight of the bracket and the mirror Kind of equal to that bar and weight so i'm not i'm not feeling any difference in the vibrations um so yeah no issues there all right then we got the quad lock phone mount so this is pretty uh basic i have it installed with the vibration dampener underneath here so there's kind of like a built-in spring underneath here um to kind of reduce the vibrations that your phone will feel and it's a very easy system you just have a case on your phone you pop it on, you turn it, and it gets locked in. So it's it's nice and easy for one-handed use. Um, and also removal is very easy to do with one hand. Uh, it's really low profile. And I think it's probably the best phone mount you can get for your bike or your motorcycle or your bicycle or anything that you're trying to mount your phone to. I think they even have stuff for the car. Um, so yeah, definitely check that out. Then over here, we have a USB port. So this is a 12 volt um, outlet, and this is an extra, uh, another, another rider here. Um, so yeah, this is a 12 volt outlet. It connects directly to the wiring of your bike, so you can basically plug in a USB. I have this little adapter in here for the USB ports, um, but this kind of just slides right out, um, and it's just like a regular cigarette adapter, um, typically what you have in your car. Um, but yeah, I just put in this USB thing so I can plug it in and charge my phone uh, while I'm riding. Uh, it's also very easy to install. Um, I don't have an install video because it actually came with my bike. But it's just one wire that kind of goes in and connects to your existing wiring. Uh, it's pretty simple to do. Also, I'll just put a link in the description below for uh, my buddy who did the install. Because this was his bike and I bought it from him. Uh, and then we have the Atlas throttle lock. So this is a mechanical cruise control right here. You basically just twist the throttle, push the button, and it locks it in place. Push the X and it releases it. Um, it's pretty good, it works pretty well sometimes. Uh, it's just a little finicky, you gotta get used to it. Um, but overall, not bad. It's very minimalistic, kinda just goes right in there. Um, there's no other wiring or anything needed, and it gets the job done if you wanna use cruise control. All right, what else? Coming down the bike here, we have the Curiacan, I can never say that right, Curiacan Mini Kinetic Floorboards. So these are not stock, obviously. Um, they are bigger than stock. They have this like rubber gripping here, so it keeps your feet on, also reduces vibration. Um, I definitely felt a reduction in the vibration when riding compared to stock. Um, and I did get a question on how they fold up and they don't really fold up so I don't know if I installed them wrong but they don't move much um, I mean if I could try to force it up yeah that's pretty much it so I mean you get a little bit of movement but they don't fold up fully uh, like the stock foot pegs in the brake side um, floorboard 
definitely moves more than the other one so maybe the other one is just a little bit too tight on the shift side but you know depending on how, what angle you have for this floorboard um, you know you could angle it differently I have it in the first hole and then I have it angled kind of I guess a little bit up compared to being completely horizontal um, and since I have it at the angle if I try to fold it in it just kind of hits this this bracket right here right so I'm sure if you mount it in a different way you could fold it up much more but that's pretty much the extent you're gonna get with the way I have it set up but I don't really care about folding anyway um, I haven't felt any impact to the lean angle when turning at all so it's it's fine no issues all right what else we got we got the exhaust so that is the cs racing exhaust from a company in brazil or south america somewhere i'm pretty sure it's brazil um, it's a nice deep rumble much better than stock it's also lighter than the stock uh, muffler uh, so this one it does actually have its own muffler inside there so apparently you don't need any kind of booster plug or power commander to use this exhaust the company actually claims that you don't need anything because of that muffler um, but i have the booster plug anyway so that came installed with my bike um, and i can't really show you that because it's kind of installed underneath this tank only thing i can show you is the air sensor from the booster plug which is right here so it kind of you know senses the airflow while you're riding and then it it determines the air the air fuel mixture and all that stuff to make it better and you definitely have a lot more reduction in the jerkiness of the throttle that is one of the biggest complaints that people have with the stock bike is that it's very jerky um, at low speeds and even at any speed if you just let go of the throttle they say that it just kind of jerks you with the deacceleration of the engine um, but the booster plug fixes all that right up I do have other videos on this exhaust if you guys want to hear it so check those out so yeah that is the CS Racing exhaust also check the link in the description below to get 5% discount if you want to buy that exhaust for directly from CS Racing so definitely take advantage of that I also get some commission off of that so if you want to help out the channel that will be much appreciated so moving to the rear further we have MC Motorsports 10 millimeter swing arm spools so this allows you to use um, a lift um, swing arm lifts to lift up the bike makes it easier to do oil changes and also do maintenance on the chain this came on my bike the previous owner put it on so that green does match pretty nicely with the S on the tank there um, I will probably black it out at some point along with that S on the tank just because I'm going for the fully blacked out look um, and then we have the Airhawk seat cushion here to improve that comfort on the booty so we all know that the stock seat on the Vulcan is terrible very uncomfortable this is the mid reach seat um, so it's supposed to be better than the reduced reach for sure um, but still not that great I also have the extended reach seat so um, I'm just a little shorter that's why I'm using the mid reach one but I'll probably put the extended reach seat on and have this Airhawk on to see if that's even better than this current setup. Um, so yeah, you just basically, if you want to get one of these, it's kind of just like a rubber um, cushion and you can fill it with air. So you just blow in here and then you close it um, and then you sit on it. And essentially if it's not comfortable, you can kind of just turn this while you're sitting on it to release some of the air. Um, and they say you're supposed to basically have it filled as least amount as you can and that will be the optimal cushioning to give you a comfortable ride so with this i've been i've been able to go about an hour and a half before i start feeling uncomfortable um you know with the stock seat i'd be riding for 30 minutes and i'd be pretty numb so it is definitely an improvement um, it's only about like 70 or 80 bucks, so it's definitely cheap a cheaper option You know other people just replace the whole seat they get like some couple hundred dollars on they spend a couple hundred dollars on like core seats or um, Other aftermarket seats that you can get another option is actually just re put adding padding to the the stock seat To make it better, but uh, right now. I'm just kind of getting by with this airhawk cushion All right, the last mod that we have is the chrome glow Fender Delete 
rear tail light so it's an LED light that goes around the fender like that it's very nice and bright um, it is obviously red this is the clear option so you can also get a smoked option for this um, but I want it clear so it's more visible it also comes with this license plate holder with a light so this is a light right here that shines on your license plate when you're riding at night and then these reflectors also come with it so it just makes it a little bit more visible to people behind you um, there is also turn signal integration in this tail light I don't have separate turn signals in the back so it will blink left or right um, which, depending on whatever blinker you're going with so the tail light is pretty bright with the LEDs it's also much lighter that stock assembly in the back is extremely heavy it actually had like a metal bracket that went all the way down just for no reason um, I guess to give it more support but yeah got rid of all that so you definitely have a nice weight reduction and you definitely see a lot more of that rear tire um, the stock one pretty much hid the rear tire um, for the most part so you get a nicer more aggressive look in the back um, you can also get this without this license plate holder um, so it's just just the tail light and a lot of people put their license plate on their swing arm right there I probably will do that one day just because I don't really like the license plate in the back like this but right now I'm kind of lazy so it is what it is so those are all the mods on the Vulcan 650 if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below as I said I'll put links in the description below for all the videos on most of these installs and also just some riding and other stuff related to this bike hope you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to subscribe hit that like button give it a nice thumbs up and i'll catch you on the next video peace